Hello, my name is Vladimir Sinkov. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon at New Hampshire Orthopedic Center. This is Tim, one of our physician assistants who volunteered to be a patient. Uh, today we're going to go over kind of basic uh, cervical spine exam uh, that uh, you may use in your clinical practice. So um, just to cut uh, straight to the chase, uh, in general, the cervical spine exam, just like any musculoskeletal exam, there are three basic elements observation, palpation, and test of function. You always start with observation. I uh, usually start with a gait analysis on any patient with cervical or lumbar spine problem. Uh, I either see them walk into the room, sometimes I do that later and see them walk out of the room. For the cervical spine in terms of gait, you're basically looking for ataxia, which may um, be a result of a cervical myelopathy. Um, and you have, uh, once they're seated and walked in, the next observation you do is the position of the neck, see if the neck is tilted one way or the other, see if the neck is bent forward, either in a permanent contraction of a cervical spondylosis or if they're holding it that way because of the cervical stenosis. Once you're done with a um, just simple examination, you may note, especially if they have a t-shirt or less than that on, if there is any muscle wasting. Uh, I usually, if they're clothes on, I don't always make the patient take their clothes off completely to evaluate for muscle wasting. I try and palpate through a t-shirt that makes it much easier, especially if the patient has a lot of pain and may be very painful for them to dress and undress, and I don't do it unless I absolutely have to. So, then I uh, walked in, I saw him do a normal gait, so I don't think he has any significant ataxia. His neck is uh, fairly straight, uh, he's not pointing too far forward, too far backwards, he's not tilting one way or the other, so his muscle balance is fairly good. I look at the muscles in the back of the neck, make sure there's no uh, muscle wasting there or uneven distribution or swelling in one muscle, which may indicate muscle spasm as well. Um, uh, look at the deltoid muscles, one of them could be uh, wasted if there is a C5 radiculopathy. Um, then usually if you can see the biceps, triceps, you look at them, if not, you just palpate the biceps and triceps, wrist extensors, wrist flexors, and look at the um, intrinsic muscles in the dorsum of the hand. If, though, if there's a muscle wasting in there, there could be a C8 uh, problem or could be other neurologic problems as well that we're going to go over. So once you're done with the basic observation, you ask the patient to do range of motion, ask them to flex their neck all the way forward, and ask them to uh, extend it all the way back. Most people, even with neck problems, can easily, uh, you can neutralize, uh, most patients, even with uh, bad neck problems, usually can bend it forward fairly easily. Extending it will hurt, hurt almost anybody who has a neck problem. It does not indicate any specific diagnosis, multiple things can do that, but you should be able to note the range of motion, flexion, extension, they can tell you some things. And then go ahead and turn you all the way to the right side and all the way to the left side. Limitation in neck range of motion, once again, may be arthritis, may be due to pain, may be due to muscle spasm as well. Uh, when the patient extends their neck all the way back, I ask them if they have a feeling of any lightning bolts shooting into the arms or legs. If they say yes, that is, it's called a positive Lermitz test. It's an indication of cervical myelopathy. Whenever you extend your neck back, you uh, pinch the spinal cord even more and they may get symptoms from that. Now go ahead and turn your head to the right all the way. And the next thing I do is uh, once they have their head positioned all the way to the right, I push it back a little bit and that's called a Sperling's maneuver. What that does is narrows the cervical foramen even more. If it is positive, patient will complain of either worsening pain or numbness in the arm on that side. Go ahead and turn the other way. Same thing, you test the other side. Even if they're on the complaint of the left arm, you always got to uh, do this exam on both sides. Um, after that, uh, we've done some of the palpation to evaluate for uh, muscle spasm. I'm um, sorry, for muscle wasting. We've done uh, most of the observation we're going to do. I do palpate in the back of the neck to see if there's any significant muscle spasm, either in the bare spinal muscles or in trapezius. They may have a trigger point, and injecting that may help them with their pain if they have a muscle spasm. So next thing we do is uh, basic motor strength. Go ahead and put your arms up like that. So this is testing deltoid muscle. Hold them up as strong as you can. You always try and overpower the patient to evaluate me because if it's a bigger patient, even if they're somewhat weak, if you just push them lightly, you may not uh, pick it up. So try and apply as much of your weight as possible to test the muscle. Uh, this is testing deltoids. Deltoids are usually innervated by C5 nerve root. Put your arms up like that. And don't let me pull them away. Good. Don't let me pull them away. Good. So that's the uh, biceps. That's usually C6 nerve. Put your arms up like that again, push me away as strong as you can. That's triceps, C7. Okay, good. Now, um, I always double check the C6 and C7 nerve root. Biceps and triceps are big major muscles to test. The problem is if the patient is coming in with either concomitant um, shoulder pathology or if there's actually their shoulder is a problem, not a neck, 
they may have a lot of pain while, while pulling the arm in or pushing the arm out and maybe giving you a false sense of weakness even though the arm is not really weak at all it is because of their shoulder hurting so I also ask them to wrist, make their, cut the wrist up and hold that up that is also C6 so C6 nerve with is biceps and wrist extensor pushing uh, wrist down and wrist flexor is C7 so your triceps and wrist flexor is C7 uh, pull my fingers with your fingers finger flexors can be either C7 or C8 and spread fingers apart don't let them push them together this tests intrinsic muscles that's a C8 nerve distribution keep in mind all these nerve distribution most of the time are correct however there are guidelines and there is cross innervation so you have to be aware and correlate that with the MRI later on as well if you're concerned about something so now we're done with the um, overall muscle testing if you are concerned about rotator cuff pathology or if you're concerned about possible C4 radiculopathy you gotta check the rotator cuff muscles which are C4 put your hands together like that don't let me push them apart good push them apart as strong as you can good put this arm up like that don't let me push it down good put this arm up like that don't let me push it down I don't do a very thorough shoulder exam I'm not a shoulder surgeon uh, however to evaluate for shoulder impingement especially if they are complaining of a lot of shoulder pain and you're not sure if it's a uh, C5 nerve redistribution radiculopathy or it's a shoulder impingement I simply uh, passively elevate their arm up and ask them if they have any pain with that or and I also do um, the rotation of the shoulder in this position this position basically evaluates very crude evaluation for shoulder impingement most people with shoulder impingement will have some pain on that and then you can figure out if that's in addition to their cervical problem or that's really their main concern so next uh, is sensory exam once again dermatomes um, are most of the time going to be correct in most patients however there are variations we have to keep it in mind so over the deltoids is usually C5 do you have any numbness on one side compared to the other? Uh, no. Uh, in terms of the arms uh, the dermatomes kind of cross over a lot so I try not to uh, rely on those and basically move down all the way to the fingers bring your hands up like that spread your fingers apart you feel like touching your thumbs? Yes. Does it feel the same on both sides? Yes. So thumb and index finger are C6 nerve redistribution. I do not do pinprick or two uh, point discrimination. That's too fine for a neurological exam of the cervical spine. That's more if you're concerned about some neurological problem or peripheral nerve problem, you would check for that. Uh, so thumb and index finger are C6. Any numbness here? No. So this is middle finger is usually C7. Any numbness here? No. Or here? And ring finger and pinky are usually C8. Uh, you can double check, C7 is usually going to be um, uh, ulnar side of the forearm and C6 is usually going to be uh, radial side of the forearm as well, normal cessation there, right? Yes. Put this hand down. So next thing I do um, is testing for hyperreflexia, Hoffman's maneuver. You flick the uh, middle finger uh, with your thumb and you watch for movement in, in uh, the patient's thumb. Positive Hoffman's maneuver, whenever I flick the middle finger, the thumb will flex down reflexively. It's a crude... Um, reflex that usually the brain will dampen and you will not see in a normal person however if the spinal cord is compressed the signal of dampening from this brain does not go through and you will see this exam right here um, after that I palpate the radial pulse you always uh, check pulses in both arms make sure there is no vascular pathology that may be adding to their complaints uh, and then I check for their reflexes to check for the reflex you ask the patient to lay their arm on yours so they're not using any muscles and all the muscles are relaxed um, there are uh, three muscles you can check. Biceps uh, deep tendon reflex is C5 nerve root. So you palpate the biceps tendon and then just knock over it. If you're not sure if you're hitting the uh, biceps tendon completely, you put your thumb over the biceps tendon so you know exactly where it is and then hit your thumb and see if there is a reflex. So his is fairly quiescent. Uh, brachioradialis tendon will be running right here. That's a C6 nerve root uh, deep tendon reflex. So you see his brachioradialis is contracting just a little bit. And triceps is very easy, triceps tendon right here, that's a C7 uh, nerve root. You see that uh, reflex. So it's thinking here, we check for the Hoffman's. Hoffman's is negative, we'll palpate for the radial pulse. And we check for the reflexes. Check for the biceps, brachioradialis, and triceps. Good. So, in terms of evaluating the cervical spine ex itself, that's basically it. You checked for uh, the cervical spine's ability to control gross movements because you evaluate the patient's gait. You see if the cervical spine is moving properly. You saw the range of motion. You checked for crude nerve impingement by Lermitz and Sperling's tests. 
and we checked for the muscle function in evaluating strength, sensation, and the deep tendon reflexes. We rolled out uh, um, vascular pathology by comparing and uh, making sure that the uh, radial uh, pulses are equal um, and symmetric um, and fairly strong on both hands. Uh, if you are suspecting any kind of peripheral neuropathy um, masquerading as a cervical radiculopathy, you should check for that as well. For example, if a patient comes in with complaints of numbness in two uh, ulnar digits, it could be C8 radiculopathy, it could also be cubital tunnel from, cubital, uh, from a ulnar nerve compression. Uh, on the medial side of the elbow, the easiest, uh, crudest way to check is basically tap over their um, medial epicondyle and see if they have reproduction of symptoms of uh, shooting pain, tingling or numbness down into those two ulnar digits. If you see that, you may suspect uh, cubital tunnel syndrome. If you can suspect in carpal tunnel syndrome, you can either do tunnels over the carpal tunnel or more accurate is a direct compression test where you push your thumb on the uh, carpal tunnel and uh, flex the wrist and hold it like that for 10-15 seconds and ask them if they're having more uh, numbness or um, tingly or pain in their three radial digits. And I think that's basically it.